What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be taking a little bit more of an in-depth look at our gun spread Y flex. Uh, if you're new, if it's your first time watching, my name is Cody and what we do is we break down Madden um, plays for you and helps help you to uh, just be more effective in Madden. Not that I know everything, but I know some stuff and we learn from each other. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit more in-depth. So I'm going to just come out in a standard cover four. I want to I want to talk just briefly about um, Gave you kind of the big picture of the air raid offense, but I want to talk a little bit more in depth about my base play. And my base play is spread wide flex. That's the formation that I come out in every single time. And then I want to show you my audibles. So my audibles, my first one is Y cross. My second one is sh Y shallow cross. My third one is drive. And that's the play we talked about yesterday. And then my fourth audible is Y stick. The next thing that you need to know is you need to make sure that your fastest or your not your fastest, but your best wide receiver is on the far right. And then if you have a really fast receiver, you want to put him in this slot uh, in the middle here. This left receiver for the Chiefs, I have Sammy Watkins, can be anybody there um, if you have a good tight end or whatever. Um, you know, someone to basically run post routes. That's what that route is primarily going to run is going to run post routes and out routes. Anyway, so the base play that I come out in every single time is mesh. It never changes because this is a system. It's a system that's designed to work very specifically and very intentionally. So you set your audibles, you come out in your base play every single time, and really quickly, when I talk about offense, what I am talking about is a philosophy that started with Vince Lombardi with the Green Bay Packers, and what he did was he ran the Packers sweep, and I believe that every single playbook, every single good offense that you've ever watched, whether in Madden or in real life, always has a power play, a power sweep, a play that they can go to over and over again. You see here, I've called this play 1,632 times. Okay, that's not an accident. What makes me really effective, and this is just the way I play, um, is I run the same play probably 80% of the time, and then 20% of the time I hot route out of it or I run a little bit of an audible like the drive concept that we talked about yesterday. So you set them up with your power play and then your counter play is directly related to your power play and it's kind of the opposite and normally you'll get a really big play out of it. So again, when I talk about mesh as my base play, what I'm saying is I'm saying we're going to run this play probably 60 to 80% of the game. That's how committed I am to this place. So you want to commit to it. You want to learn the ins and outs of it. And we're going to talk about that right now. So mesh. The, the place that this play always starts with is this corner route. This corner route to Tyreek Hill is the first read. And in a lot of cases, you're going to throw this route a ton. So you want to practice it. You want to get good at the timing of it. But it's a motion snap. So you're going to motion snap Tyreek Hill. And, or you're going to motion him, and as soon as he moves, you're going to snap the ball. So you do that by hitting circle or on the PlayStation or B on the Xbox, and it's going to go to Tyreek Hill. You're then going to click left on the D-pad to get him to go in motion, and once he moves, you're going to hit X or A to snap the ball. Okay? Motion, and then I hit snap the ball. As soon as he cuts to the outside, I'm going to pass lead it to the right at a 3 o'clock on your joystick. So you're going to hold your left joystick and ha ha pass lead it at three o'clock and you're going to throw a bullet pass. You don't want to throw a lob pass because if you throw a lob pass, the corner is going to be able to break down on it. So you want to throw a bullet pass to the right. I'll show you it again, motion snap and then throw it right out there. Now this play is going to beat almost every coverage in the game. If the corner on the right is in a deep blue or in man to man, this route is open. The only coverage that stops this is a Tampa 2, not a cover 2 hard flat, not a cover 2 sink, a Tampa 2 with a cloud flat. That's the only zone in the game that will stop the shroud. So I'll, show, I'll give you another example here. So with the Patriots, the thing that you do have to watch out for is when they go man-to-man, -man, Stephon Gilmore has the man-up ability. What the man-up ability allows is it allows you to play more effective or tighter man-to-man -man coverage. So every now and then he'll cover it. So I'll just show you uncut here. Again, wait for him to cut out. And you're going to click on it. You see he can swat that. So when you're facing a Stefan Gilmore or a Richard Sherman, what you want to do is just flip the play and run it to the other side. So like right here, I flipped the play. So now Sammy Watkins is going to run it. It's not a big deal, um, but I flip it. Again, I'm going to motion him one step, snap the ball, and you'll see here 
very still very effective and again when you catch it it's always 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 a possessing possession catch unless they are wide open so if the defender is near them you really want to possession catch it so that it can be a consistent yard gainer let me show you uh let me show you stuff on get more one time and typically you can actually even fit it in it's just a and that right there that is the trick the trick is in the motion snap of the play so when what you want to do is you want to bring Tyreek Hill in just enough to get a little bit of a rub on that corner because you're gonna the the corner is going to be in movement so he's not going to be able to uh, turn his body as fast as he would be so man up ability doesn't even matter so if you motion him in just a little bit get him right where he's even or leaving and there you see I didn't get it the worst that's going to happen is he's going to swat it okay he's never going to I've never been intercepted on that route. Um, when I when I get it in enough to where he gets that natural rub, um, it's always worked out for me. But basically, there it is. And I say he'll swat it from time to time. So again, if you're playing a manned up corner like that, and you see now he's activated his his super ability or whatever his X factor. But you see against zone because he's a man corner against zone, it's not going to work. Richard Sherman on the 49ers, if you're playing them, he has the zoned out ability. Well, the zoned out ability, if they run cover three, it will work some. It's not as effective as the manned up ability. Let me show you cover two sync here. Um, cover two sync is probably the one that gives it a little bit of challenge. But you'll see hard pass lead to the, right, to the right, and the reason that it covers it is because he's he's the principal is telling him to man up, okay? So again, if you're facing a manned up corner like Richard Sherman, it's kind of a, an easier rule of thumb just to flip everything you're doing. And again, the defense, just they just can't cover both sides, okay? So it's an, it's an easy deal right there. There you see there was no one around me, so I just, you know, I can just do the standard rack catch. Okay. So that's where everything starts. And let me show you real quickly what's going to happen in a cover two cloud set, set scenario. So I motion him in. I get him where he's even or leaving. And then if I throw that, you see there I got intercepted. So when he plays outside leverage, again, Madden's about, you know, football in general is about leverage. The corner had outside leverage of Tyreek Hill. I can't throw that route. Um, what I could try... Um, if you wanted to get really deep with this route, what you can try is to pass lead it up. If you see cover two like that, you can just pass lead up into the, and you can kind of, there I got picked off again, but you can sometimes fit that in. But again, I wouldn't recommend it. What I would recommend is just going through your progression. So you see outside coverage, you see that that's taken away. Once you see that, just come down to your next reads. The next reads on this play, uh, especially against cover two, that's why you want to put the running back on a streak. This is the this is the uh, vertical stretch that we're going to put on the defense. So we go, we see, oh, he's in cover two. My next read is right to that running back. And as you can see, that running back is going to slip right up the seam for a pretty effective uh, route. What's going to start happening is your defense, the defender, is going to begin usering the middle of the field. If they don't already do it naturally, this play is going to force them to do that. And a, a lot of games that I've played in Madden, because of how much I throw that corner out, they'll actually start usering the corner route. If they use the corner route, the reason that that's not a good strategy is because they've completely left the middle of the field wide open. They can only cover so much field. So what we want to do is we want to basically put stress on the user over the middle because more than likely the most effective strategy to stop this play is to run a cover two with a user over the middle. Again, um, you're going to be able to throw that corner route against cover three, cover four, cover two sink, cover two man, cover zero every single time and the only way that you won't be able to do it is if he has a zoned out or manned out ability on that superstar x factor corner if they do have that you just want to run it to the opposite side or just be picky when you run the play and just know that you're going to have to thread the needle a little bit okay so the next read from that is to look to the running back and then to look to the meshes so right here you see these meshes they are always open all and when i say always i mean Always. The worst thing that can happen is in a cover two scenario, what's going to happen is the, the vertical hooks. You let me show you the defense here. These vertical hook cloud zones, it, when they're pressed up, like when they're over the guys, they'll they'll naturally press them. So the, 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 that's the challenge. 
Okay, your receivers are going to get bumped, and that's going to delay the timing. Okay, a little bit, but it still is open. It's not that it's not open. It just takes a little bit longer to develop. So cover two, the outs and the are all covered, and then you'll see here they just slip right in the middle. So if they if and what it does is it puts stress on the user. So here's what the user is going to do. 100% guaranteed, this is what's going to happen. They're going to take Bentley right here, and they're going to use him to kind of take away the crossing routes. Now he's not going to be able to take away both of them, but he's going to, tr you know, I mean, they're going to, you're going to try to do that. So again, you go through and that's going to leave this wide open seam to the running back late. So the running back is an early lead and early read and a late read. You're basically reading corner and out route first. Then you're looking up to the seam up the middle of the field, see what's going on. One other little quick tip on this. The out route is kind of an underrated route this year. Um, most people don't really talk about it, but it's a similar version. of it's. You know, If we had a corner route, it would be even better. But you motion the corner. Oh, he's manned up. So then I'm just going to throw that out route. And I'm telling you, I throw so many out routes with this play. Throw so many out routes with this play. So... You can easily you can easily do that and be effective as well. Um, again, I would try to really practice that motion snap. If you can get the natural rub of the players, it's even better. But man-to-man uh, -man coverage, this play just really, in my opinion, is very difficult to stop because if they do cover the corner route, say they got someone manned up, you can go the out route. If they don't cover either, if they do, if they cover the out route, some miraculous way, maybe through shading or whatever then your crossing routes will always come open. You just have to wait, wait. You just have to kind of watch them. And eventually they're going to come open and you're going to be able to pass lead them uh, to the outside of the, whichever side they, they go. Um, there you see, there's that manned up ability again, kind of, kind of um, hanging with him. But again, if he was, let me show you, let me show you this flipped. Um, so you've already seen the corner route flip. Let me show you the man coverage flipped on that out route so if he runs the out you see that manned up ability just shuts it down okay so that's just something you need to be aware of that's something to think about you know that's kind of the beauty of having a stefan gilmore but the problem is for teams like that they've you know you you can have one good player you don't typically have 11 manned up abilities you normally can have one or two especially if you play salary cap or head to head um so anyway and then these crossing routes right here um, they just really, they just really typically will do a really good job right there, I think. And that's why it's important to watch the running back. If you notice there, the running back is, someone's going to come open. So again, you're going corner route, out route, and then up the seam. But you see right there, uh, Travis Kelsey on the crosser. Okay. So again, that's how you run the mesh. And the best way that I can, um, What's gonna, what you're probably gonna run up against a lot, and this is what's gonna happen a lot. They're gonna take the running back, so they're gonna take away the, in a best case scenario on the mesh, they're gonna take away the running back, the four, the two outside receivers, and then what's gonna have to have to happen is you're gonna have to look at these mesh routes, and they're gonna sit down right in the zone. And what you want to do, just so that you're clear, you want to wait to throw it until they sit down in the zone because if they, if you throw it too early then what's going to happen is their um your pass lead will get a little bit messed up and with the mesh route what i always recommend is do not do not do not do not pass lead that route just throw it right just throw it unless it's in a man to man situation where they're completely crossed through and they're, they're there's no chance of them stopping but you'll see here they're going to sit down right there and what i recommend you do. Once you go to throw that ball, immediately click on the receiver by hitting circle or B and then hit possession catch, which is A or X. If you do that, this play, I really believe you could run this play over and over and over again. Okay, so what might happen is they might go cover to sink, but they might go underneath coverage. The problem is if they do that, watch Tyreek Hill. So you see he's underneath coverage, pass lead it up. And you see that's a dot, easy dot, over and over again. Okay, so you see this play goes a little bit deeper than just the, you know, oh, well, you got the corner route and that's the best route. It's all of these things differently together. And if I have a route, Kim, like, 
um, some some of you will play with the Patriots, and you'll have Tom Brady. What you can actually do also is you can take Sammy Watkins and put him on a post route um, if you don't want to throw outs. The reason I like the out route, though, I've come to really love it. Um, I didn't like the out route at first, but I've come to really believe in the out route, and here's why. It's, it's one thing when you have one route to the outside, but because you have two routes to the outside and they both can only be covered with cover two cloud, it really does open up things. Let me show you cover two sync on the out route. The out route is kind of the, like I said, it's, it's one of the really underrated ones that we have at our disposal. But here's cover two sync, and you see he does have that outside leverage, so you can't throw that. But let me show you. Um, so cover two sync, cover two cloud will take care of that side. Um, but see that forces that that it forces that hand, and then what's ha that's going to set up everything we're going to do from our other plays. Okay, then what's going to happen is cover two sync. If they go if they go underneath coverage, and what you're getting what you're getting in the habit of here is the defense is having to do multiple things to stop it. So here I just pass lead that out route up and to the outside, and you see it's an easy dot against cover two underneath. So what happens is when you run this over and over again, they know that they've got to, as a defense, they've got to go cover two sink, and they've got to cover underneath. And the reason that they have to do under, shade underneath is because the little crossing routes, that's what's going to get the defense to play those a little bit more, a little bit tighter. There I took a sack because I was waiting for them to develop. Um because I really want to show you this. This is the crossing routes, and they're still going to be open, but they're basically just little hitches, but right there. And if you possession catch it, they can't do anything, right? They can't do anything about it. But if they go underneath, and this is the thing that you have to see, this is like the most important part of the whole play, when they force underneath like that, they have to re-hot route their outside corners to cloud flats. So here's underneath, and you see this guy's standing wide open in the end zone. So there's just a lot in this play, and I would encourage you, if you're watching this, um, to really maybe watch this video a couple times just to get the full depth of everything that you can do with this play. This is what I talk about when I talk about committing to your strategy. When you commit to your strategy, when you commit to your power play, you will rep it over and over and over again, and that's what's going to help you really make a difference in your game. So I wanted to dive just a little bit deeper into the mesh play. We talked about the counter play yesterday in drive, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about a couple of other wrinkles that you can throw in this that makes it really powerful and really effective. So um, be sure if you're new to subscribe to the channel because that way you're going to be able to see all of our future content. And if you have any questions about the mesh or any questions about Madden challenges that you're having, I'd really like to get into a discussion with you in the comments. So be sure to let me know what you guys are thinking, what your challenges are in Madden. Look forward to talking with you and we will see